acquired by the New Jersey Tech Council. And so now we have a much broader focus around what we can do around the state to raise a part of innovation. I'm really excited about that. Before we get into this, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people who make this a possibility. And the first people I want to thank are the, the staff of the New Jersey Tech Council. You're going to notice on all the logos that say Propelify, most of them it says powered by NJTC.org. And the staff at the NJTC, didn't, they didn't necessarily sign up to bust their ass building out this event when I came on board at the Tech Council. And they had a choice, they could have walked out the door or they could have leaned in to make this happen. They are the power that powers Propelify this year. A big round of applause to the staff at the New Jersey Tech Council. Dan, Poonam, Peggy, Meredith, Anna, Nike, you guys kick ass. The board of the Tech Council's been very enthusiastic. It's super energizing. I wanna thank them for also putting their weight behind it. I know a lot of them are here today. And so I'm really pleased and honored that you guys would, would trust me with the future of the Tech Council and get behind this event, literally rain or shine. There's an incredible leadership team of people who volunteer their time. When I, when I started doing this, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to really afford the right kind of staff, so I put out a call to volunteers thinking I'd get three or four or five. And we got 65 people, people who show up every single week to figure out whether it's like make a sign, order furniture, find flowers, find a designer, whatever it is, these guys jump on it. And I, I'm so grateful that you guys give your time to Propelify. It's hugely humbling. A lot of you guys are here. We definitely owe them a big round of applause. Please, a big round of applause for the Propelify leadership team. I have to do a call out to this guy, the second guy in blue here. This is Ed Shea. He's been busting his ass all week, making sure these tents are up. Every time I say move it four inches, let's put this table over here. It takes a lot of heart and a lot of hustle. He's been with me since day one. We gotta give a big round of applause to Ed Shea, thank you. And I gotta thank you guys. This Yesterday, this was just a canvas, right? And you guys are the paint that turns it into a beautiful piece of art. Today is gonna be a lot of fun, but it's gonna be a lot of opportunity. I know that a lot of people, this is a great filter, right? The rain is a great filter for who's serious, who's gonna show up and make shit happen, and who's not gonna show up. I think this is a perfect metaphor for how likely you are to be successful in whatever it is you're trying to disrupt or build. So I want to thank all of you for actually showing up and being here. Big round of applause for you guys. And then lastly, hopefully I'm not forgetting anybody, is my family. Anybody here who's an entrepreneur knows that, that entrepreneurship is, is, a, is an all-team sport, it's an all-family sport. And they've certainly um, had a lot to do with supporting me through all these years of the ups and downs. And any of you who are, who are entrepreneurs know there are lots of downs. Often it's like big win celebration and then what's called the trough of sorrow. So you hang out in there for a while. And your family's sometimes dealing with you while you're in that trough of sorrow. And so I wanna thank my parents for being unwaveringly supportive. My in-laws are here. And especially my wife, Rebecca. I love you, thank you for doing this. We're celebrating our anniversary, our 12th anniversary on Sunday. Thank you very much, I love you. And my kids who are here in spirit, they'll be here later. You see some really ridiculously cute children, give them high fives and tell them where I am. So today is a work day, right? People who tell me I'm not sure I can take the day off, I'm not sure I can be there. I'm like, if you think about this as a day off, you don't belong. This is a day on. This is a day built to create opportunity to build your businesses. Whether you're whether in the storm over there with Edison and with them meeting investors, whether you're uh, meeting Hackensack who wants to invest in your businesses, whether you're meeting the press, there's a lot of press around here today covering your business, whether you're meeting talent, there's a lot of opportunity here for you to build your business. While this is meant to be a lot of fun, and I guarantee you it will be, it's really about creating a unique opportunity for you to save time, and to do something that might take three months or six months or a year to at least kick off that process in a day. We've got over 33 hours worth of investor meetings happening right over there all day long. Think about the time savings that that, that that creates. And I guarantee somebody who's trying to get in touch with an investor certainly wouldn't let rain stop them. And I'm thrilled that none of our speakers, none of our investors, none of our exhibitors bailed on the rain. I think it shows the kind of heart and hustle that we have here. I'm gonna take a very quick break because you only have about 30 seconds. I know the job is tough, but come on up here for a second. You literally do have 30 seconds. It's the one time I'm really gonna cut you off, but please, tell, please welcome the mayor of Hoboken, Mayor Robbie Bauer. Hi, how are you? So I'm on the clock, 30 seconds. Just want to welcome everyone to the city of Hoboken, first and foremost. Secondly, I want to thank Aaron Price 
He's an innovator. He's a leader, not just in Hoboken, but statewide, nationwide. I remember a couple years ago, Aaron uh, came down to the White House for a, an innovation t uh, tech meeting and presented. Um, he was the only person from New Jersey in a nationwide uh, tech innovation meetup um, uh, at the White House. So uh, Aaron has brought from Hoboken to a national level uh, tech innovation and it's something that as, ma as a mayor I'm very proud of and very grateful to you Aaron for, for what you've done. So, yes. My, my 30 seconds are over, but um, I just want everyone to enjoy the day, take advantage of all the booths, and um, at the end of the day, uh, enjoy your happy hour. Take care. Thanks, man. Over here, over here. Where are you going? Man, Robin, high five. We'll do it up top. There we go. Thank you. We don't need luck, right? It's going to go great. All right. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, what's next for the Tech Council. So we, many, how many people have been to a Propel5 event before? Nice. Welcome to all the newbies. The way that, 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 that this has unfolded is, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I found it to be a pretty isolating lifestyle. Most of my friends took more traditional career paths, more normal jobs, or at least certainly uh, uh, less risk jobs. And I found that what I was doing was a little more isolating. And so I started going to events across the river and thought there's gotta be people in New Jersey who share this similar crazy gene and who want to hang out, maybe we can help each other build their businesses. And so I started the New Jersey Tech Meetup nine years ago. And it's grown into the state's largest tech, uh, group of, of entrepreneurs. We're still the largest group of, technology, of entrepreneurs of over 7,300 members. And so one day I had this crazy idea, why don't we all get together? Because this has been such a powerful, motivating force for me. Um, why don't we get together at scale? Maybe we don't need to necessarily go to a web summit or South by. What if we all got together and saw and to see how could we help each other build our businesses somewhere here? And I thought, why not do it at this pier? It'll never rain. It'll be great. <laughs> it doesn't rain in Hoboken. And so in 2016, we launched what was then the Propeller Innovation Festival. We're now Propellify. And it's been really thrilling and humbling to see it grow each year. This summer, we had the opportunity to join forces with the New Jersey Tech Council. And it was, it was a time where I thought that New Jersey is really has an opportunity to break free. There's an enormous amount of enthusiasm and energy around what we could do here to compete with people across the river, at least to hold our own ground. How many people here came from or come from New Jersey? Who thinks they came from the furthest place away to get here today? Where, where did you come from? Florida. Anybody further than Florida? Where's you? Oh, California, Meltzer. Anybody else? There are internet, there's like, we have all 50 states represented, maybe they're not here yet. We have 12 countries represented. So what we're gonna do is applaud Meltzer for making his way across the country to be here. Thanks for coming. We'll find a guy from China later and he'll do your, your, your first place, but for now, you got the title. And so as this event grew, please let me know when he gets here, okay? As this event grew, uh, a few opportunities opened, and the New Jersey Tech Council was interested in some new energy, and I was looking for a way to add resources around what we do here, because it's kind of insane. And a few things came up, um, and ultimately I thought that New Jersey was primed for an opportunity to break out. And so we made a deal for the Tech Council to acquire Propelify, and I'm thrilled that we have a united front to attack what I see as a huge opportunity with the right time, with the right leadership, with all of you enthusiastic about what can happen next to raise the bar for the Tech Council. And so what that means to me is really shaking things up. And like I said, I'm really thrilled to have the support of the board to shake things up. I'm thrilled that they're receptive to other crazy ideas I have like this, that we can do things we can do to put us on the map. Because there's a lot that creates an ecosystem. It's not just certainly this one event. It's not just having good funding. We're lacking press. We're lacking workspaces. We're lacking a lot of awareness. The talent is certainly here. The businesses are here. But we're losing them to lots of places across the river and across the country. And so. My, my challenge to you is to join me in this mission. We're certainly not gonna be able to do it alone with this Tech Council staff and I. But what we do need to do is raise the bar and significantly change the narrative. And so I'm super tired of mediocrity, which is what I think we've been living in mostly for the last decade. So what you don't know is that with your ticket came an entry onto the team of the Tech Council. I expect all of you to become part 
of this ship because together we can definitely make a big dent and a big difference in what will be a very interesting, energetic, and certainly a more impactful future for the Tech Council. So with that, I want to introduce Dave Meltzer, if you want to come up for a minute. I know we're waiting a couple of minutes for the governor to arrive. So, Dave, I met, Dave spoke at the first event, I think. Second, second event. Yeah, second. I don't know. Dave. Dave spoke a couple of years ago, kicked ass on stage. We became friends. If you follow him on social, his content is ridiculous. If there's one thing you leave here doing on social media, it's follow, what are you, at Dave Meltzer? David. At David Meltzer. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Just a guess. Um, for the Jews in the audience, you'll get that. Um, why don't you tell people a little about Sports One Marketing and your mission here, and I'll be back with the governor. Yeah, right on. Get a little history. Right. Um, <clears throat> hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot the most important thing. Huge round of applause for Dave Meltzer for being here and being our MC today. All right. Yeah, here's the governor. See, that's all you have to do. Create, create, the the innovation is about creating a void and filling it. <laughs> a pleasure to be a void. <laughs> So, you can sit down. Okay. One of the things that I talk about in this ecosystem building Where's is having... the fire? <laughs> yeah, the fire went out in the rain. It's a fireside chat. Um, it, it is, is the building of the ecosystem and having the support in a lot of different places. And so, I, I was fortunate enough to meet the governor uh, while I was campaigning. I've been thrilled that he's been so supportive of our missions in New Jersey. It makes a huge difference whether you agree with his policy or not. Just that he's out there fighting for the innovation economy, fighting for tech startups. And so, please help me officially welcome the 56th Governor of New Jersey, Bill Murphy. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you being here, weather in the storm. So I, I wanna start with, you're the CEO of the state. You started yourself as a startup. What are the lessons of entrepreneurship, of breaking through, of marketing, that, that people here building companies can learn from how you build a coalition to break, you know, to break through and ultimately win. Let me just say, first of all, I'm really happy to be here and to be back at Propelify. Aaron and I met, it's going on five years, believe it or not. Uh, even before I was declared as a candidate, we bonded over the opportunity that New Jersey has in the innovation economy, particularly the startup uh, economy within that space. Uh, I'm also thrilled that not only did, has Aaron found the Propelify, but he's now the CEO of the New Jersey Tech Council. So um, hats off to this guy as well. Right? So, you know, at one level, I've been a, I've been in business. I was a U.S. ambassador. I'm now the um, I'm now the governor of the state of New Jersey. And in some respects, there's nothing new under the sun. There's a lot of commonality. In other respects, you've got completely unique, new experiences. I, I think the building and rebooting and renaissance of the startup community and culture in this state is much more in the former category than the latter. I think it's basic blocking and tackling. I consider myself the head of the head of the sales department. Um, we sell talent and location. I just came back from a trip to India, seven day state visit, six cities. I talked about talent and, and location morning, noon and night. Uh, and the great thing about India is what it's good at in its economy is matches up really well with what we're good at. Tech, telecom, life sciences in particular. So I think it's head of sales, it's looking in the mirror and being cold-blooded about what you are and who you are and what you're not. I'd love to be able to say we can make cars again in New Jersey. I, I hope maybe someday we will, but, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. We're not, we're not the low-cost state to do business in. Uh, we're not a right-to-work state. So you sort of so say, who are you? And I think you, you're cold-bloodedly honest with yourself. And we are a state that reeks of talent, location, and has the DNA for the innovation economy. My view is you ride those horses morning, noon, and night. What do you look for as you build out your team? What did you look for when you were running? What do you look for now? I know it takes a lot of grit. It's a small and powerful force. What do you look for and what should other people here look for as they build their own teams? Well, I mean, talent I mentioned, uh, and, and we spend a lot of time, policy, money on making sure we continue to be the number one talent state in America. And we've got a lot going for us. So we, we were just rated as the number one public education system in America. 
Uh, first time ever, we've been number two forever. We're now number one in the country. That's a big deal. Uh, we're opening up from pre-K all the way up to accessibility and higher education. We have the highest, you know, if, if you're not a Jersey person, just a couple of quick things. We have the 11th largest population, the ninth largest economy, uh, and the, but we're the fourth smallest geographically, meaning we're the densest state in the nation by far. But what's even more important in this space is we have the highest concentration of scientists and engineers per square mile of any place, ready for this, in the entire world. Uh, so you betcha, so we gotta ride that, we gotta ride that. So you're looking to do everything you can to make sure that magnet for talent stays as strong as it is. We're never gonna be a, the low cost state to live in, but we're gonna be again, if it kills me, which it might, the good value for money state, where you say, okay, I pay a little bit of a premium to be in Jersey, but I get a rich basket of stuff back. And I would say the other thing, Aaron, is we don't, we don't only wanna be the good value for money state, we wanna be the good values state. So we want no state in the nation to be more open and more supportive of things like our relationship with the environment, our LGBTQ community, women's health, a sensible gun safety, how we treat our immigrant brothers and sisters. It's not just value, but values, and increasingly, that's why people make decisions they make. I mean even more so, and I, I totally appreciate that, is how you personally build out your staff and what you look for in, as you build out that team that people I'm, here should think about what they look for as they build their teams, because it's critical. Talent, diversity, uh, energy, um, high work ethic, we have um, the most diverse cabinet in the history of our state. It's a majority women cabinet, which I'm incredibly proud of. Uh, it's probably among the most diverse in the country. High talent, uh, high passion. Uh, getting different perspectives in the room is critical, so I don't want everybody from one school of thought. Uh, we have an extraordinary innovation officer. Is Beth Novak here? I know Beth, they are here. I don't know if she the is Office here. of Innovation, Beth Novak is our Chief uh, Innovation Officer. Uh, she worked for the Obama administration. She advises a kitchen cabinet uh, to Angela Merkel, my friend from my days in Germany. She advised uh, David Cameron, not on Brexit, I have to say happily, but um, on innovation matters. Beth's Office of Innovation is hiring, is the community host area, is that an area? It is an area, it's right over there. Right over there, the Office of Innovation is there. We're, we have an open to buy. I'm so excited I popped a button on my shirt walking over here. Uh, uh, we've got an open to buy, particularly for engineers, product designers, public policy folks. Um, I think this is a great time to enter government. The, those are some of the skills that I, and, and attributes that, that our team has. What could the tech community here do? I, you know, Beth obviously leading the charge very specifically in that front, but what could we all do? You know, I, I lean on this community a lot to get involved so that we can together, rising tide. What can this community do to help raise the bar for the tech community in New Jersey? Uh, a, a bunch of things. I just see Joe Kelly is here, our Deputy Chief of Staff in charge of Economic Affairs. One more time, Joe, could you wait? There you go. Uh, so Joe, Joe uh, is a person to grab onto when you leave. Um, We've got Rutgers in the house, so one big uh, element of our game plan is to deepen the relationship between our higher ed, in particular research universities, and the real economy. So anybody who's in and around that space, count us as all in, and anything we can do to deepen that, we think the correlation from that deepening, particularly, again, in the, I don't wanna be a STEM-only governor, I believe in the arts, I'm a former actor, in high school and college, so I gotta make sure the A in STEAM doesn't get lost, but the reality is in the big research fields, anything we can collectively do to deepen that relationship. In India, by example, uh, I had Rutgers, Princeton, NJIT, New Jersey City University, and Rowan University with us in our delegation. Each of them signed at least one memorandum of understanding. So if you look at the game changing, a uh, shout out again to Rutgers and say Princeton is the biggest private, the extent to which their relationship in the real economy deepens and we can strengthen the arc from theoretical to applied research to commercialization, uh, that's going to be good for the home team. That's the playbook in Boston. That's the playbook in North, Northern California. That's in many respects the playbook in North Carolina and Austin. There's no reason why we collectively can't not just uh, read from that same playbook, but lap them. We, we are, in fact, a state, you could say, with 
great data points and date, great um, uh, verification points. We were Silicon Valley before there was a Silicon Valley. Bell Labs, uh, Thomas Edison, Sarnoff Labs, AT&T, the life sciences, uh, getting that back, particularly in the startup community. So I, I, I think it's an all in together, but that space in particular between higher ed and startups, higher ed and the innovation economy, that, that the research arc, that's where I think if we, if we all live on that space, we'll all have huge payback for that. You know, as I think about the, the future for the Tech Council, it's driven by these principles of collaboration, differentiation, and excellence. And differentiation in particular, do you think there's a time that people will seriously consider, you know, if there, if there are one or two people about to start a, start a company, that we can differentiate to have a better offering here than they can across the river, across the country, and how do we get there? Yeah, I, I believe it's not only realistic, I think it's happening. Uh, and it'll be our own version. You know, I don't want to copy somebody. So while we rip pages out of other people's playbook, the playbook in the aggregate is the Jersey playbook. That's unique to us, which which includes some attitude, right? We're in New Jersey for crying out loud. Uh, That's what we do with the rain. That, come on, man. I, in fact, I love the fact it's raining. Uh, this is like, you know what? We're not, we're not afraid to stand up and have a fireside chat, even though it's three degrees outside of driving rain. You got Jersey backbone here. Who, who told you to do this? Exactly. Uh, but listen, we've got, I don't want to make your eyes glaze over, but we also believe it's not just talent location, but government policy that, that puts wind in the sails. So government isn't going to be the answer to all of our hopes and dreams, but we can clearly put jet fuel in, into our aspirations. And I think we're doing it uniquely in New Jersey. You know, we restructured our angel investor tax credit. We updated the R&D tax credit. The folks at the Economic Development Authority uh, have now put a program in place called NJ Ignite, which allows startups and incubators uh, will help you with your rent and overhead so you can put more focus and money into your R&D and product development. Um, Just to be clear there, that means free workspace. Yeah, for two, at least two months, am I right, Joe? Two months. Uh, that's real money, that's cash in the barrel. Um, uh, we've reignited the, the, I forgot all the words in it, in addition to the Tech Council, the Science, Technology, and Innovation Council. We've got a, a rock and R&D Council. Um, we have proposed, and I think ultimately will be successful, in getting a one-of-a-kind uh, venture capital uh, fund, uh, which is very cool. If you want me to go into it in any detail, I will. That's going to be a potential home run. And we've got a great relationship across the river. So this, in many respects, as New York goes, so does at least the central and northern part of New Jersey go. We're one big metro area. So we, we don't wish any ill will across the river. As they go, we go. But, but having said that, uh, we are on the margin cheaper. Uh, we can, you can get to uh, downtown and the west side uh, and uh, midtown just as easy from here. Newark Airport, I've done it a lot, is a lot easier to get to over there than it is from Kennedy. Um, we, we bless them, we, go, we hope they get the subway fixed. We're, we, we're gonna, I'm gonna fix NJ Transit if it kills me, which it might. Which it might, I, I, hope, I, won't, I won't, hope I don't expire on stage. Uh, but th but their price tag I just read recently for their subway is 65 billion dollars. So for all the challenges we have at NJ Transit, uh, it's within us. Um, and 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 by the way, we're not out of space. We may be the densest state in the nation, but we've got the same nine million people spread over a much bigger footprint. So we've got a great relationship across the river. But the fact of the matter is, this is as compelling, particularly in a Hoboken in Hudson County obviously, but I think increasingly Essex County, Bergen County, Union, and Middlesex, these are just as logical places to plant your flag for your startup and to live as it is across the river and still be able to benefit from the great metro metropol metropolis of New York City. Totally agree. Let's go back to the Evergreen Fund, which we were talking about before. Yeah. So this fund, in case you're not clear, is follow-on capital to vet at VC so that, we talked earlier about this day is about saving you time. This fund is about saving you the roadshow. So that companies that want to put capital into your business have follow-on capital from the state. Can you tell people a little bit more about how this works yeah. and when it's going to happen? It's, it's a great, is, is Tim Sullivan here, Joe? So Tim Sullivan deserves a huge shout out, runs the, he's the CEO of the Economic Development Authority. So here's the idea. Uh, we sell tax credits to big companies that have uh, a tax exposure in New Jersey. Uh, and, and that's a lot of big companies, right? We sell that, my guess is we'll sell them as they usually do for 90 cents on the dollar. 
Um, we take the proceeds. Uh, by the way, how do you win that auction? You win it on two bases. What are you willing to pay? So the more cents on the dollar that company's willing to pay, the more likely is that they're going to win. But importantly, importantly, alongside that, what is their commitment to helping us with the startup economy, startup culture in New Jersey? What are they prepared to do? So you might have a big company that's got open lab space and say, okay, I'm willing to house free of charge up to 10 startup tenants. Um, I went over in a state visit last fall to Germany. That's what Bayer does in Berlin. In the back of their big campus, they've got a building they don't use, but it's state of the art, and they vet the startups to come in and basically use that, and they find some symbiotic relationship. It might be a mentoring program. You might say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna take 10 or 20 Rutgers um, uh, tech students or life science students and mentor them, whatever it might be. Those are the two bases upon which we pick the winner. The money comes down with the commitment. We staple that money to real private VC money. We then step back because I'm not going to be, and we're not going to be in the business of picking stocks. And that, that those venture capital uh, firms uh, invest the money in, with only one caveat, in the startup community, with a, with, in companies and startups with a New Jersey nexus. So you get jump-started public and private capital invested by professionals with a commitment by the big companies to do stuff for the startup community. And every time we've talked about this with the big companies, it connects. And, and I used to think it was a zero-sum game. Uh, and I was dead wrong about that. Uh, in, particularly in, in, the, in the innovation space, and I can say particularly in New Jersey, it's a one plus one equals three. A big company that feels like they're participating in the startup culture uh, that's not a threat to them. That's actually a source of potential hiring, new products, potentially buying or joint venturing with those entities. It's basically another appendage that they're going to be able to rely on over time. We haven't gotten it uh, through the legislature yet, but we're making good progress. Uh, when we get it through, it'll be one of a kind in the country. I'm really excited about it. The other day you announced at the one year anniversary of the uh, economic plan, uh, business first stop. You tell people about this program and, and what it is. God, I love you. Uh, 70 mile an hour fastballs right down the middle of the plate, as it normally is with the New Jersey press. <laughs> Excuse me, just make sure you're paying attention back there. Um, so, business first stop. One of the things you heard about on the campaign trail, before the campaign trail, you're still here today. New Jersey, on a, at its worst, is you know right up there on the red tape front, on the bureaucratic front. Uh, and again, a huge kudos to Beth Novak and Joe and the EDA folks. Um, we've been out there taking feedback, trying to figure out how we can put together one door for you to go through if you want to start a business, you want to expand your business, you want to move your business to Jersey. Business First Stop. The website is quite easy, business.nj.gov, business.nj.gov. It's, a, it's being beta tested, so it's not the end of history. And in fact, we'd love you to go on there and give us, there's a feedback link, give us some feedback on what you, you needed that wasn't there. But it's the whole raft of dumb questions, permitting, which is a big thing. You know, we are when you're the, the densest state in the nation. you got to take land use, the environment, development really seriously. This is not a passing interest to us. you got to get it right. Um, and so that's a big, you know, there, there are big permitting uh, hurdles in New Jersey, not for the sake of being bureaucratic, but because we got to make sure we're getting it right. This is a great development. Again, I give Beth Novak and her team, she's hiring, as I mentioned, in the community host area, engineers, product designers, public policy folks. Would love you to go on business.nj.gov. Let us know what you think. So entrepreneurship is about overcoming hurdles. And so I'm curious, what are some of the hurdles that were unforeseen in, in the journey of being governor that you have figured out a way through and solved? I don't want to get too political, but I spent, if people ask me all the time, what are the biggest surprises? Rel I've been in office, for those of you who may not be following, uh, 20, about 21 months. Uh, far and away the biggest surprise is the amount of manpower, focus, money, that we have to put into compensating, mitigating, and litigating from all the crap that's coming at us out of Washington. Uh, it, is a, it is morning, noon, and night. 
Uh, somehow that's on. This is now we know the Russians are involved. <laughs> yeah, Don't forget to turn your ringers off, please. No worries. I left my ringer in the car. Uh, so, but seriously, that's that's a, a big challenge. And when you're in Germany, as we were last fall, or Israel, so that, that was our state visit last year, this year it was India, uh, you, you spend a lot of time uh, look, t talking to folks. In many cases, they're already in Jersey or in, and want to do more. And you know, we came back from India with at least 1,250 jobs, and I think there are several thousand potential that are, that are behind that. Um, or somebody who may not be here yet and say, listen, what's going on in America? This is not the America we know. And maybe it's a specific discussion, trade, tariffs, um, as an example that comes up. Uh, so that's been the biggest challenge uh, by far, and the biggest, you know, and as I say, mitigate, compensate, litigate. Uh, and I'm proud that we're doing all of the above, but we don't wake up reflexively looking for a fight every day. We only engage if it's got a New Jersey nexus, unfortunately. If you're the most diverse state in the nation, the, the ninth largest economy located where we are, in need of a lot more infrastructure from the federal government, particularly to build some, some more rail tunnels under the Hudson, invariably we're waking up and we're in a fight whether we want it or not. But we'll continue that. Um, I think we shine uh, as it relates to what we can control. I think that nexus of talent and location, I think we all in Jersey ought to be really proud of that. No other state can, can make the, the, the passionate plea in either of those areas that we can, and we'll continue to. What are some other areas where you think that the, that the state could stand out, how large corporations, for instance, can play a role to make sure that we drive the startup economy? How, you mentioned educational institutions, yeah. NJIT, Stevens, Rutgers are all here today. What, what are other ways that we can come together? Because the, the size of the state is also a challenge for the state. There's a lot of different interests all around, right? We have different things we're thinking about here than people in South Jersey are thinking about. How, how do we find common ground so we can work together instead of create little fiefdoms? Yeah, I think I think we're doing that, but I and I think too much is made of the geographic um, uh, realities in the state. We're all, we're the size of Israel. We're not that big a state. Uh, we're all packed in here together. Um, there are different dynamics, without question. You got a much bigger ag exposure in the South than you do in this part of the state. Uh, you've got nuclear power plants in the south that are existential for employment in the economy. Uh, NJ Transit, you rely a lot more on bus routes in the south than you do in the north where you've got a much more even split on rail and bus. Uh, you've got a relationship with Philadelphia across the Delaware, which is a different dynamic than the one we have with New York across the Hudson. But what can, what can folks do? I, I, I tell you, I, I think the acceptance that we're all in this together in that one plus one equals three opportunity is real. So if you're a big company, uh, in addition to, or, or small, frankly, b being in that arc, as I mentioned, theoretical applied commercialization where I think increasingly higher ed and higher ed research sits, um, I think that notion of getting your fair share of that one plus one equals three prop proposition uh, in other words, the more, you know, uh, the, the love you make, and whatever the Beatles 50 years are ab on after Abbey Road, you know what I mean? The more you put in, the more you're going to get out. And uh, the notion of big companies meaningfully playing in that higher ed nexus and in the startup space. You know, for instance, we've got something called the hub in New Brunswick, which is going to be a big innovation hub. It's going to be in multiple stages. Uh, we're going to unveil the first stage. Joe will tell me if I'm wrong sometime this fall. Um, it's going to be a great example of what I'm talking about. Big players, corporates, healthcare providers, startup space, Rutgers and Princeton, both in there. Uh, that gives you that, that incredible energy and kinetic sort of reality that leads to good things. So I can't give you the blueprint, but I know, as they say when they were asked for the Supreme Court Justice, to define, I, I, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. I know a model like that is gonna be a winner. Um, what about, how much of the issues of New Jersey are just the branding of New Jersey? Like, I, don't, I see a lot of people wear an I Heart NYC shirt. I don't think anybody here is wearing the I Heart NJ shirt. <laughs> how do we fix that brand? Uh, we're selling I Heart NJ shirts <laughs> in community host area as well, alongside- Hiring this, uh, and free shirts. Exactly. <laughs> 
listen, I, I, I love our brand. I mean, I, 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 it's got attitude, it's got talent, people love where we are. Yeah, I, at one level, I, I, I'm not, again, not trying to be political, I inherited a few big messes, big structural deficits, pension, healthcare, property taxes, NJ Transit, which was allowed to, to, to shrivel and, and go to waste. We're turning the reality of all of that around. Uh, we talk about a stronger, fairer New Jersey that works for everybody. Um, it's stronger and fairer. Some folks would like you to believe it's one or the other. We don't believe that. We believe you don't make economic progress without social progress. You don't make social progress without economic progress. I get tagged as a pro-growth progressive. When you think about what I've just said, those are presented in many cases as either or choices. And, and we accept that they are and both. So when you've got the number one public education system in America, you've got the talent beyond education that we have when you've got the location, yeah, maybe our brand got chipped up a little bit, but I think it is there's, there's more momentum in the Jersey brand right now in terms of measuring the angle on that curve than in any other brand in America. What were some things, obviously there was, a, we were thrilled at, to make the top 10 list for Amazon's second HQ. Yep. Obviously lost a bit there, but what were some lessons in that process? Because I'm sure you leaned in heavily on what New Jersey can offer a company like Amazon. What can we do to win the next Amazon? Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the clock, but I'll so give you shorter answers. I'm watching it for you. Um, it's a lot easier. We were proud, Newark in particular deserves a shout out. So one thing more than anything else it did, it, uh, as Joe Keller reminded me, New York City gets 98 mile an hour fastball pitches with big corporates morning, noon, and night. Now we're getting them and we're getting our rightful share in New, New, Newark in particular, which is a great story, a story on the ascent, right? <laughs> Newark was able to sharpen its game, its pitch. It was a good hold yourself up to the mirror to see what we still need to do there. The mayor's doing a great job. Uh, that, that was the big takeaway for me. The second one is this, in as much as we would have loved to have them, and by the way, they're in, Newark already in, in, in the person of audible.com and audible's a big player in Newark um, and, and Amazon takes advantage of our location with a lot of its biggest warehouses in the country um, so we were we were honored to participate in that but there is one lesson it's cheaper if they're born here than if you have to get them to come here yeah. uh, well, which is why there. the startup stuff matters so much for somebody who's in the trenches right now who's struggling with a one or two person startup trying to figure out where they're going to set up shop for the long term why should they make? Why should they build the next Amazon here? Well, I, I think at the risk of repeating myself, you've got no better location. You'll find no better talent in the world. You've now got a government which is leaning into this opportunity with a whole range of policies that are going to put wind in your sails and not put roadblocks up against you, whether it's a portal or paying your rent or restructuring the angel t tax credit or this evergreen investment fund, which is to suck in more VC. I think it's becoming a perfect storm between talent, location, government policy. I don't think there's any place better that, that I know of in the country that's a better place to start something here. It won't be the cheapest place, but you get what you pay for. This is, we will hang our hat on a good value for money state with good values wrapped around that. I don't think you get that anywhere else in America. Governor has a lot of demands on his time. and He spent a decent amount of it with us in this community, and I want you to know, Governor, how much we sincerely appreciate that you do that. And his wife is gonna be here as well this afternoon talking about Golden Seeds uh, coming to New Jersey to set up a new angel network here. I think she's about to show up, actually. Yeah, well, that, are you leaving? I gotta go, unfortunately. unfortunately. She's, this tent is not big enough for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for Governor Thank Thank you. We're gonna do a big selfie, you guys are in it, so give me some love. You guys look fabulous. <laughs> Governor Phil Murphy, everybody. Thank you very much. Mr. Meltzer, where are you? So, you're a little out of order here, but this is officially our MC for the day. You guys are in excellent hands. Another round of applause for Dave Meltzer, Sports One Marketing, awesome guy. He's going to talk this afternoon around 2, 2.15. It's going to be killer. He's taking over from here. Stick around. Lots going on. I'll see you out there. All right, let's hear it for Aaron Price.
Aaron just brought me here because I look like I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> More than he does. Although I am a branding expert, I used to run Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, and Warren Moon and I have a marketing and media company. One of the things I would give as advice to the governor, though, is do not brand New Jersey the densest state. <laughs> um, I get it. From California. Um, anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Innovation uh, is our expertise. Innovation will change the world, in my opinion, and this is one of the core that will change the world with innovation. We can change the environment with it. Sometimes we're too react reaction-oriented, but innovation is what truly will save us. And so I'm inspired to be here today to bring on some great perspective. I know the governor talked about manpower, but I talk about people power. And we're going to start off on that note by bringing up two lovely entrepreneurs uh, about leaning out the truth about women power in the world.